Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Computer Happiest. This video is about the five most important lessons I have learned after using Monogame for over a year. So far I've created three full games in Monogame along with some side projects. I work as a senior software engineer at my day job and the lessons I have learned there usually apply with Monogame also. However, these are the ones specific to Monogame that I have learned. Number one, never ever put logic in the draw method. Put the logic in your update method. The draw step only has 1 60th of a second to execute, and if you put a lot of logic in there, it will not finish in that time period. It will just draw to the screen whatever it already has and exit. You'll have sprites that never rendered in your draw call. If the update method takes more than 1 60th of a second to execute, it simply skips the next draw step and continues executing. This isn't so bad because it just temporarily drops your draw rate to 30 hertz instead of 60. That's much better than having sprites fail to draw on the screen. Ideally, your draw method will just loop through your game objects and draw the ones that have visible set to true. Number two, always use layer depth when drawing your game objects and have sprite sort mode set to front to back or back to front. Without layer depth and sprite sort mode, you'll have to call the end of your sprite batch and a be begin a new one in order to draw a sprite on top of another or even worse draw the sprites in a specific order so the last sprites draw on top of the others. Number three, there should only be one sprite batch that begin and one sprite batch that end in your entire game. If you obeyed rule number two, you will never need more than one. Number four, implement a state machine in order to divide your game into functional states that are completely separated from each other. The book Mono Game Mastery shows how to do this. In my games, I have a splash screen state, gameplay state, and an end state. Each state will have its own initialized load content, draw, update, and handle input method. Without a state machine, you will have a game1.cs that is enormous and more complicated than it needs to be. You can also create states that are just for testing certain elements or scenarios in the game rather than hacking up your game1.cs just to test something. Number five, stop redoing the same work. Reuse classes from other video games that work perfectly. Only rewrite a class if you figured out a simpler or more efficient way to do it. Number six, I know I said five lessons, but consider this one an honorable mention. This lesson I knew before learning Monogame. However, it applies to video game programming as much as any other type of programming. If you discover a bug, immediately stop what you are doing and fix it. The worst thing you can do is have a post-it note with bugs that you need to fix later. If you attempt to fix it right away, you'll remember all the recent changes you made, and it will be much easier to debug. In addition, your future code won't be written on top of broken code. That's all I have for now. Next year I may have more lessons learned. These lessons work for me, and I hope they work for you. Happy coding, and have a good evening.